Government Minister Josh Frydenberg offered condolences to Pakistan on Australia's behalf. I spoke to him a short time ago. Well, Foreign Minister Julie Bishop has put out a statement uh, expressing our uh, deep uh, concern and our condolences uh, to the, the families of the victims uh, as well as the people of Pakistan after this horrific attack which specifically targeted Christians uh, celebrating Easter and it just goes to the heart of the grotesque motivations of the perpetrators of these attacks because they're seeking to divide our communities and to strike fear into the homes of innocents and whether it's in Lahore whether it's in Madrid, London, Paris, Brussels, Bali, New York, Sydney, uh, these are Islamic extremists uh, who, uh, by virtue of their, uh, their acts, are creating a, a huge amount of innocent uh, bloodshed, and that is unforgivable, and it does deserve a very strong reaction. Mm. These were women and children that were targeted in this attack in Lahore. Besides uh, our condolences, is there anything more uh, the Australian government can offer the people of Pakistan, the government of Pakistan, or uh, do we not have that type of relationship? Oh, we have a good working relationship with Pakistan and Laura, we are working with all countries, including Pakistan, uh, to, uh, to defeat this form of extremism, this violent form of extremism. And as you know, our troops uh, are deployed, as, um, whether it's in our Air Force or uh, it's our other d defence personnel, uh, are deployed to, uh, to deal with this threat at its heart in, in, in Iraq at the moment. Uh, and uh, we know all too well through the large number of Australians who have gone to fight in Syria and Iraq, over 100 at the moment, uh, and around 190 are giving them support uh, back here at home, whether that's through financing or recruitment. Uh, around 50 Australians uh, have already been killed uh, over there in Syria and Iraq, some of whom have been suicide bombers, and more than 160 passports have been cancelled by the Foreign Minister of Australians who who are going over to those trouble spots. So we, we know all too well the significant challenge we face here in Australia. That's why our federal police, our law enforcement agencies, our intelligence agencies are doing everything they can, both domestically and cooperatively with other countries, including Pakistan, to try to defeat this very violent extremist threat. Minister Frydenberg, if I could just switch to domestic issues now. Howard era Minister Peter Reith this morning on Sky News has warned Tony Abbott he needs to, quote, keep his head down or risk trashing his legacy. Do you agree with him? Well, I welcome uh, Tony Abbott announcing that he'll be campaigning far and wide and and uh, for, the, uh, the, for the election of the Turnbull government. Uh, he's an important colleague and uh, member of our team, and he's entitled to do that. Uh, but at the same time, we just have to reinforce that the single purpose uh, for all of us at the next election is to see Malcolm Turnbull remain as Prime Minister and to see the coalition government uh, re-elected because we can't afford to see Bill Shorten in the lodge. We can't afford to see the unions run amok. We can't afford to see the disastrous job destroying, productivity destroying, growth destroying, negative gearing policy that Bill Shorten and Chris Bowen uh, so you dismiss, uh, Ms. Ms. Frydenberg, you dismiss and any suggestion that Tony Abbott is proving to be a bit of a distraction at the moment by some of the comments he's making in the media, some of the op-eds he's writing. Do you encourage him to keep doing that? Well, Tony Abbott uh, is entitled to make those decisions himself. It's, it's not for me. Uh, as one of his former ministers to be telling him uh, what he should be doing. At the same time, uh, the only thing that I'm focused on, Laura, is to see Malcolm Turnbull uh, elected uh, as Prime Minister and his government returned uh, because it's vitally important for the future of our country and that is what I know Tony Abbott wants to happen and that is what uh, we all should want to happen on the coalition side. Will Tony Abbott be campaigning with you in your seat? 
I don't know uh, at the moment. Um, I am uh, starting to put together uh, uh, you know, potential campaign programs in light of the fact that we could be at an election on July the 2nd if the Senate misses the opportunity to pass the important pieces of economic legislation before them, namely the ABCC and the Registered Organisations Bill. Uh, but I'll not only be working hard in Kuyong, but I'll be working in other parts of the country, uh, you know, consistent with my responsibilities as the Minister for Resources, Energy and Northern Australia. And another of your colleagues, uh, Cabinet Secretary Arthur Sinodinas, he has been very strong uh, in coming out against the AEC and this uh, donation, so what could be called a scandal in New South Wales. Is that proving a distraction for the government? Well, Arthur Sinodinas is a person of the utmost integrity, a very decent man and a good colleague and friend. And he put out a statement uh, which made it very clear that despite what the Labor Party says, the New South Wales Electoral Commission is not accusing him of breaking the law. He denies any wrongdoing. Uh, he went before ICAC and his sworn evidence is now a matter of public record since 2014. And this is clearly just a smear campaign on behalf of the Labor Party, Laura. Uh, and it's a distraction that the Labor Party is putting up because it doesn't want to talk about the fact that 100 CFMEU members are now before the courts for their own uh, activities. And we need to focus on delivering good economic policy to this country. And I think talking about uh, what uh, has transpired with Arthur Sinodinas uh, does not help us towards that end and does not really matter to the people of Australia. We'll see. Josh Reidenberg, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. <laughs> Great to be with you, Laura. Hundreds of anti 